Hello everyone, Dennis here. In this video, we are going to discuss about GCO Level Mathematics October-November 2020 paper. Subject code is 4048, paper 1. This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Question 1. Calculate negative bracket negative 11 minus square root of negative 11 square minus 4 times 16 times negative 50 over 2 times 16. One mark. For this type of question, what you need to do is very simple. Just take out a calculator and press 1. Ever you have seen here. I put screenshot here for what you need to do for a calculator. So as I said just now, just press whatever you see on the expression into the calculator and the value that you get will be negative 1.46 which has been rather up to three significant figures. Question 2 y is inversely proportional to x squared. Which of these diagrams represents the graph of y against x? So here are four diagrams for you to choose. And it is a one mark question. So the answer will be diagram 3. For a very simple reason, this is an inverse proportion function. So the diagram will look like this where the x exists is x and the y exists is y. Question 3. Given this diagram, AB is a tangent to a circle, center O. CB is parallel to OA and angle OBC equals 66 degrees. Find angle OAB. 2 marks. Here is the solution. Given AB is tangent to the circle, which means that angle OA, OBA will be equal to 90 degrees because tangent is perpendicular to radius OB. So this is the angle. From the diagram, we can say that 66 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle OAB equals 180 degrees because this is interior angle, where CB is parallel to OA. You solve this equation, and you get angle OAB equals 24 degrees. Hence, the answer is 24 degrees. Question 4. The graph shows the total daily newspaper circulation at the end of each of the given years. And here is the graph. A. State one misleading feature of the graph. One mark. And B. Explain how this feature affects the reader's interpretation of the graph. One mark. For A, we look at this number, which is the beginning of the y-axis. This number isn't 0, so the y-axis does not start from 0. How can this feature affect the reader's interpretation of the graph? Because if the graph does not start from 0, the change of the graph is enlarged. It seems to drop more than the actual case. Alright, because we don't start from zero, the scale is bigger, therefore the change seems to be very huge. Question 5. A. Write 4 to the power 5 as a power of 2. 1 mark. B. Simplify 4a squared over 3b divided by 10ab over 21. 2 marks. For A, 4 to the power 5 is equal to bracket 2 square to the power 5. When you remove the bracket, we can multiply the power together. Hence, it, it is also equal to 2 to the power 10. Therefore, the answer is 2 to the power 10. For b, given this expression, 4a squared over 3b divided by 10ab over 21, the first thing we do is we, we change the division sign to multiplication, which becomes 4a squared over 3b times 21 over 10 AB, where the second fraction becomes the reciprocal. So the next step is we can multiply or divide the number 
as the first fraction and then multiply with the letters where for this case we can see that a square is divided by a for the b it is at the bottom for both b so we can treat it as they multiply together where the power can be added together the four form here is times a to the power 2 minus 1 over b to the power 1 plus 1 then we simplify this answer which becomes 14 a over 5 b squared therefore the answer is 14 a over 5 b squared question 6 given this diagram the diagram shows a regular hexagon and an equilateral triangle the ratio of the parameters of hexagon to triangle equals 1 to 2 Find the ratio of the areas of hexagon to triangle. Two marks question. So let's label the side of the hexagon as X and the side of the equilateral triangle as Y. Therefore, as mentioned in the question, the ratio of the parameters of hexagon to triangle is 1 to 2. So the parameter of the hexagon is 6X, the parameter of the triangle is 3Y. So we simplify this equation we get x over y equals 1 over 4. Next, let's look at this triangle inside the hexagon. It is uh, each triangle in the hexagon is equilateral triangle. So this is th the bigger triangle is also an equilateral triangle. Therefore, we can say that both triangles are similar triangles. So let's label the area of the small triangle is A1 and the area of the bigger triangle is A2. Therefore, A1 to A2 equals 1 over 4 squared, which gives us 1 over 60. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to times 6 for both sides as inside the hexagon there are 6 triangles. Therefore, the equation becomes 6A. 1 over a2 equals 6 over 16 and we simplify it becomes 3 over 8 so the answer will be 3 to 8 question 7 given this stem and leaf diagram the time to the nearest minute that each of 23 men spent shopping one week was recorded the results are shown on the stem and leaf diagram a Write down the median of the times. One mark. To find the median of the times, the first thing we need to do is we take the number of men from here, which is 23, divided by 2, and the value is 11.5. So this means that the median is the 12th data. So we can start to count from the first data, which is 75 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this number will be the median and the value is 83. B. When the time of a 24th man is added to the diagram, the range increases to 33 minutes. Find the two possible times that this man spent shopping. One mark. We know that range equals maximum minus minimum value. So since the time for this man affects the range, his time must be the maximum or the minimum. So let x to be the time for this man. Okay, so the first possible value will be the maximum value. Therefore, the equation will be 33 equals x minus 75 where x equals 33 plus 75 and the value is 108 minutes. Or, we assume that this man's time is the minimum number. Therefore, the equation will be 33 equals 102 minus x, and x equals 102 minus 33, and the value is 69 minutes. Therefore, Two possible times that this man spent shopping is 108 minutes and 69 minutes. Question 8. 
Her bag contains some red counters, some blue counters, and some yellow counters. The probability of choosing a red counter at random is 0.45. The probability of choosing a blue counter at random is 0.3. A. Find the probability of choosing a yellow counter at random. 1 mark. To find the probability of choosing a yellow counter, first we can take 1 minus 0.45 minus 0.3, where 0.45 is the probability of getting a red counter, and 0.3 is the probability of getting a blue counter. So 1 is a 1 hole, which means it is an absolute possibility. So the value we get will be 0.25. This is the probability of getting a yellow counter. For B, in the back, there are 9 more red counters than blue counters. Find the total number of counters in the back. 2 marks. So firstly, we need to take 0 0.45 minus 0 0.3 because probability also shows fraction of the counters, right? So 0 0.45 is the ratio or the, the fraction of the red counter and 0 0.3 is the fraction of the blue counter. Therefore, the difference here will get 0 0.15 and this 0 0.15 refers to the 9 counters. So I want to get one hole, then it is as x counters, okay, as mentioned in the question, to find the total number of counters. So therefore from here, we can form the equation become 0 0.15 over 9 equals 1 over x. So x will be 9 over 0 0.15 and the answer is 60 counters. Question 9. Solve the equation x over 5 minus 2x minus 3 over 4 equals negative 3. 3 marks. First of all, this is the equation given which is x over 5 minus 2x minus 3 over 4 equals to negative 3. So we combine the two fractions at the left hand side together. We get 4x minus 5 times 2x minus 3 over 20 equals negative 3. So we expand the bracket, we get 4x minus 10x plus 15 over 20 equals negative 3. So we solve this equation, we get negative 6x plus 15 equals negative 3 times 20. Okay, then we further uh, expand the bracket, we get negative 6x plus 15 equals negative 60. So 6x equals 60 plus 15, x will be 75 over 6. And we can leave the answer in decimal number, which is 12.5. Question 10. Express x squared plus 9x minus 4 in the form bracket x plus q squared plus p, 2 marks. So this is the quadratic factorization topic. Question 11. A. These are the first four terms of a sequence, 11, 20, 29, and 38. Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence, 1 mark. So before we want to form the expression for this nth term, first we have to identify the types of sequence is this. Now, let's see, from 11 to 20, it is plus 9. From 20 to 29, it is plus 9 as well. From 29 to 38, it is also plus 9. So this is an arithmetic sequence because each uh, next sequence or next number, it is added with a constant number which is 9 here. Therefore, a equals to 11 which is the first term and the common difference is 9. Then we can apply the formula of arithmetic sequence, which is tn equals a plus n minus 1d. Then substitute the value, 11 plus n minus 1 times 9. Expand the bracket, we get 11 plus 9, n minus 9. And it is equals 9n plus 2. b. One term in the sequence is 335. Find the value of n for this term, 2 marks. So we know that Tn equals to 9n plus 2. Just substitute Tn as 335 and we want to solve this equation to find the value of n. 
So n will be equal to 335 minus 2 divided by 9, and the answer is 37. Question 12. Kim, Pat, and Sin share $285. The ratio of the amount that Kim receives to the total amount that Pat and Sin receive is 3 to 2. Pat receives $24 more than Sin. Calculate how much money each they each receive. 3 marks. So, the total amount that Pat and Sin receive equals 2 over 3 plus 2 times 285, which gives us $114. Therefore, this means that Kim received 285 minus 114, which is $171. So we let X to be the amount that Pat received. Therefore, X minus 24 equals the amount that Sin received because based on the sentence, it says that Pat receives $24 more than Sin. So X minus 4 equals the amount that Sin received. From here, the total amount that Pat and re Sin received is 114. So X plus X minus 24 equals 114. So we solve this equation, which becomes 2X equals 138 and x equals to 69. So pet receives $69 while sin receives 69 minus 24 which is $45. Question 13. y equals 16 minus 4 x squared. A. Find y when x equals to negative 2. One mark. So this question is pretty simple. Just substitute the value of x equals to negative 2 into the equation, which we get y equals 16 minus 4 times negative 2. And the answer is y equals to 8. B. Rearrange the formula to make x the subject. 2 marks. So from the given equation, y equals to 16 minus 4x squared, we bring the 4x squared to the left hand side and the y to the right hand side. So it becomes 4x squared equals 16 minus y. So x squared equals 16 minus y over 4, and x equals plus minus square root of 16 minus y over 4. And we can simplify, we get x equals plus minus square root of 16 minus y over 2, as square root of 4 equals to 2. Question 14. A water tank is 60% full. 16% of the water in the tank is used. There are now 378 liters of water in the tank. Calculate the capacity of the tank when full. 3 marks. To this illustrate what is described here, we can draw a diagram to show the overall picture. So let this as the tank. So 60% of the tank is filled with water. Among this water, 16% of the water is used. And the remaining here is 378 liters. So let V to be equal to the capacity of the tank when full as we want to find this value. So the amount of water filled up the tank will be 0.6 water V as it is 60% full. And the amount of water used will be 16% of the amount of water filled up the tank, which gives us 0.16 times 0.6 V as 16% is 0.16 and the 0.16 V will be the amount of water that filled up the tank. So we get 0.096V. The remaining water will be equals amount of water fill up the tank minus the amount of water used. And from here, remaining water is 378 liters. Amount of water fill up the tank will be 0.6V and the amount of water used will be 0.096V. Hence 0.6V minus 0.096V equals 378. 
We solve this equation. 0.504b equals 378 and b will be 378 divided by 0 0.504 and the value of b will be 750 liters. Question 15. Bernas invests $850 at a rate of R% per year compound interest. At the end of 12 years, the value of her investment is $1,120. Calculate the value of R. 3 marks. So this is a compound interest question. So we can apply the compound interest formula, which is S equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. Then we substitute the values given. So the S will be 1,120. The P will be 850. Then bracket 1 plus R over 100, close bracket to the power of 12. Then we can start to solve this equation. So 1 plus R over 100 to the power of 12 equals 1,120 over 150. So 1 plus R over 100 equals 12 roots of 1,120 over 850. The R over 100 will be 12 root of 1,120 over 850 minus 1. And the R will be the 12 root of 1,120 over 850 minus 1 times 100. Then you just press calculator and get the value of R, which is 2.33. Question 16. A. Universal set is A, E, G, I, N, O, P, Q, R, E, S, U. Set A is all the letters in the word Singapore, so S I N G A P O R E. Set B is all the letters in the word square, hence it's S Q U A R E. Find 1. A intersect with B, 1 mark. And 2. A union with B, then prime, 1 mark. So to find the A intersect B, we need to check the common elements that set A and set B have. So for the S is the first letter that both set A and set B has followed by A, then R, and last letter is E. Therefore, A intersect with B equals S, A, R, E. Next, to find A union B complement, so we need to find A union B first. So the elements in A union B will be S, I, N, G, O, A, P, O, R, E, followed by Q, U. Okay, because union means we combine all the elements in set A and set B. So now we can find A union B complement. So we find that there is no elements in this set notation. Therefore, it is equal to null set. B. Use set notation to describe the shaded region. One mark. So this is the shaded region. So before we want to find the set notation of the shaded region, first we need to find the set notation for unshaded region. So which is P in the set Q. Now, set notation for shaded region will be P intersect with Q prime. Question 17. A map has a scale of 1 to 2 million. A. The distance between Singapore and Phuket is 950 kilometers. Calculate the distance in centimeters between Singapore and Phuket on the map. 2 marks. So, Given the scale 1 to 2 million, it means that 1 centimeters is to 2 million centimeters, which is 1 cm to 20 kilometers. So, x centimeters equals 950 kilometers because this is the distance between the Singapore and Phuket, as given the question. So, the x will be 950 divided by 20 and X is 47.5 centimeters. 
For B, the area of Malaysia is 330,803 kilometers. Calculate the area in square centimeters of Malaysia on the map. Two marks. So, we know that the scale is 1 cm to 20 km. We square both sides to get the ratio of the area. And the result is 1 cm square to 400 km square. So, why cm square is to 330,803 km square? So, the y will be 330,803 over 400, the value is 827, round off to 3 significant figures. Question 18. Given this diagram, the diagram represents a tower, AB, built on horizontal ground. The height of the tower is 45 meters. From a point C, the angle of elevation of the top of the tower is 36 degrees. Point D is 22 meters from C and BCD is a straight line. Calculate the angle of elevation of the top of the tower from point D for marks. So, firstly, we look at triangle ABC. It is a rangle triangle, so tangent 36 degrees equals 45 over BC. So BC will be 45 over tangent 36 degrees, and the answer is 61.937 meters. So the length of BT, BD will become 61.937 plus 22, and the result is 83.937 meters. So tangent of angle ADB equals 45 over 83.937. So the angle ADB will be equals inverse of tangent 45 over 83.937. And the result is 28.2 uh, degrees. So angle elevation will be equals 28.2 degrees round off to one decimal place. Question 19. A. Simplify 3 bracket 3x plus 2y minus 5 bracket 5 minus 3y. Two marks. So first given the expression 3 bracket 3x plus 2y minus 5 bracket x minus 3y. We expand the bracket, we get 9x plus 6y minus 5x plus 15y. So the x term plus with the x term, which we get for x, the y term plus with the y term, and we get 21y. So the answer will be 4x plus 21y. B. Factorize completely 12ab minus 9ax minus 8by plus 6xy. Two marks. So given this expression, 12ab minus 9ax minus 8by plus 6xy. For the first two terms, we can factorize 3a. So it becomes 3a bracket 4b minus 3x. And for the second part, I factorize negative 2y. And the bracket becomes 4b minus 3x. So we can see that 4b minus 3x is the common factor of these two terms. Then we can factorize 4b minus 3x, which we get answer is 4b minus 3x times 3a minus 2y. Question 20a. Find the prime factors of 1188, giving your answer in index form. Two marks. So to get answer, we have to do this uh, division, right? 1188 divided by prime numbers, the smallest prime numbers will be 2, right? We start with 2 here, then we get 594. Continue to divide by 2, we get 297. Then we move on to the next prime number, which is 3, and we get 99. We still can divide by 3, we get 33, continue to divide by 3, and you get 11. 
So finally, divide by the next prime number, which is 11, and the one here. All right. So from here, we can get 1,188 equals 2 square times 3 cubed times 11. B, two integers A and B can be written as product of prime factors. A equals P times Q to the power of R plus 2 times 11, and B equals P squared times Q to the power of R times 11. The lowest common multiple, LCM, of A and B is 1,188. 1. Write down the values of P, Q, and R. 2 marks. So, firstly, we write down all the LCM, A, and B together like this first. Then we can start to compare. We know that in LCM, if they had the same body, we will have to write down and we choose the largest power here. So obviously, the largest power here is square, then the P will be 2. So hence P equals to 2. Next one, the next uh, prime factor is 3. So Q will be 3. Okay, and between uh, power of Q right is R plus 2 and R, right, for LCM, we will choose the highest power. That means this R plus 2 will be equals to 3. So R plus 2 equals to 3, and we solve this equation, we get R equals to 1. Part 2, find the highest common factor, HCF of A and B, 2 marks. So from here, we update the product of prime factors for A and B. So A will be 2 times 3 cubed times 11, and B is 2 square times 3 times 11. So for HCF, if they have the common body, we will choose the lowest power. So for 2, right, the lower power is 2, power 1, so which become 2. Right, for 3, the common factor 3 here, right, we will choose the lower power, then it's 3. 11 is the same power, then it's 11. So HCF will be 2 times 3 times 11, and that's the answer which is 66. Question 21. Given this diagram, ABCDE is a pentagon with AE parallel to CD and AB equals to BC. Angle ABC equals 144 degrees, angle EAB equals 120 degrees, and angle AED equals 78 degrees. A. Complete these statements. Angle EDC equals something because what's the reason? 2 marks. Part 2. Angle BCD equals something because the reason? 2 marks. B. Explain why the quadrilateral ACDE is a parallelogram. 2 marks. So, let's look at the first question, right? Angle EDC, which is this angle. So, from here, I can tell that this angle is 102 degrees because angle AED plus angle ECD equals to 180 degrees because this is an interior angle where the line AE is parallel to line CD. Next, angle BCD equals to 96 degrees. The reason is because the sum of interior angle of a pentagon, right, which is 5 minus 2 times 180 degrees, and answer is 540 degrees. Alright, so we add all the angles together, right? Then we minus 78 degrees, minus 120 degrees, minus 144 degrees, and minus 102 degrees, which is the angle of EDC. We should be able to get the angle of BCD, which is 96 degrees. Alright, and for part B, why this uh, quadrilateral is a parallelogram? So given AB equals to BC, Therefore, angle a uh, triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle, right? So angle BCA will be this angle, right? It is 180 degrees minus 144 degrees divided by two, then we get 18 degrees. Next, angle ACD, which is this angle, will be angle BCD minus angle BCA, and the value is 96 degrees minus 18 degrees, we get 78 degrees. So this angle is 78 degrees. So this angle is 102 degrees from part 1. From here, angle EDC plus angle ACD is 102 degrees plus 78 degrees. 
then it gives us 180 degrees. Which this can tell us that ED is parallel to AC because it is interior angle. So given that AE is parallel to CD, therefore ACDE is a parallelogram since all the four sides they are actually parallel with their opposite sides. Question 22. Given this diagram, the diagram shows a sketch of a horizontal field AEFDG. A survey of the field was carried out and the measurements taken. The measurements in meters of some of the lengths are shown on the diagram. Angle BAE, DCF, and DBG are right angles. ABCD is a straight line. A. Angle BGD equals angle BAG. Show that BD equals to 54 meters. One mark. Alright, so given angle BGD equals to BAG, and we also can say that angle DBG equals angle ABG, which is 90 degrees, because this is the angle sum of a straight line. So by A property, triangle ABG is similar to triangle GBD. From here, we can say that angle BAG equals to angle BGD. So tangent angle BAG will be equals to tangent angle BGD, which is, uh, we know tangent is opposite side over adjacent side. So for tangent angle BAG, it is equals to 36 over 24. For tangent angle BGD, it is BD over 36. Then we can solve this equation. BD equals to 36 over 24 times 36, and the answer is 54. Hence, shown. Part B, the area of the section ACFE equals 1586 meters square. Calculate the total area of the field AEFDG for marks. Alright, to answer this question, uh, the area of ACFE, which is uh, ACFE, right, this uh, something like a trapezium here, right, the value is 1586 meters. Okay, so we can apply the trapezium formula, right, half times the sum of parallel lines, which is FC plus EA, right, so it's FC plus 30, because EA is 30, right, and then times if the height, the height is 37 plus 24, then equals to 1586, right, then we can solve this equation, FC plus 30 equals 1586 times 2 divided by 37 plus 24, so FC will be 22. Right, so once we get this length FC, then we find DC, right, this, this uh, length equals to 54 minus 37, right, then we get 17. So we can find the total area of this whole shape, right, by adding the area of this trapezium and then the area of all these three triangles. So it will be 1586 plus half times 22 times 17 right which is uh, the area of this triangle and then half times 36 plus 50 times 54 right which is uh, this triangle all right the next one half times 34 times 36 which is this triangle okay then the rest you just press calculator and you get the value is 3177 meters square question 23 the frequency table which is this one shows information about the time in hours that each of 140 adults watch television in one week. A. Calculate the estimate of the mean time. One mark. To calculate the mean, we have this formula, sum of fx over sum of f. Before we want to use this formula, we have to find the x which is the middle of the class. So the first class it is 2.5. So how we get this value, we just need to add the lower limit with the upper limit, which is 0 plus 5, then divide by 2, we get 2.5. So the next class is the same thing. So 5 plus 10 divided by 2, we get 7.5. The next is 10 plus 13 divided by 2, and we get 11.5. Then the next class is 13 plus 16 divided by 2, we get 14.5. 16 plus 20, we get 18. 20 plus 25, we get 22.5. Right, then we can start to apply this formula, which is 6 times 2.5 plus 13 times 7.5 plus 32 times 11.5 plus 
okay, plus 62 the frequency here times 14.5 plus 22 times 18 and then plus 5 times 22.5 then divide by the total which is given here right 140 okay then the rest you just press calculator the answer is 13.5 hours which is rounded off to 3 SF B this cumulative frequency diagram which is this one right shows the same information one 40 percent of the adults watch more than n hours each week find n two marks so we have to calculate right four percent 40 percent of the adults which is 40 or 100 times 140 okay the value is 56 and the question says that it is watching more than n hours each week then we have to count the number right from behind which is 140 minus 56 right is 84 so this value we get from the graph so the 84 is over here and we want to see what is the value at the x axis so from here the n is 14.5 and this is the answer part two one of the adults is chosen at random find the probability that the adult watches between 8 and 13.5 hours two marks so to answer this question first we have to know what is the number of adults that watch eight hours so from here this is eight hours and want to find the, the value at the y-axis which is 12 here similarly for 13.5 hours so the, i want to know what's the value at the y-axis and it gives us six d so the probability will be the number of adults who watch between 8 to 13 hours divided by the total adults so for this case it will be 60 minus 12 over 140 and the answer is 12 over 35 question 24 given this diagram OABC is a quadrilateral vector OA equals A vector OC equals C and vector CP equals M bracket A minus C A write vector OP in terms of A, C and M one mark so to find vector OP we can write it as vector OC plus vector CP so this is applying the chain rule right start with point O and with point P so O is here P is here and the letter in between here must be the same right C and C okay we know OC given as C CP given as M times AC A minus C so substitute inside here so C plus M bracket A minus C expand the bracket C plus MA minus MC and group the like terms together we get MA plus 1 minus MC B vector OB equals 4 bracket 1 minus M C plus 4 M A in terms of A C and M 1 show that O P and B lie on a straight line 2 marks so given that vector OB equals 4 times 1 minus M C plus 4 M A so we can factorize the 4 here which is 4 bracket so 1 minus M C plus M A and we notice that it is for OP vector OP right because OP is M A plus 1 minus M C which we found from part A so this whole thing will be just vector OP so from here we can make a conclusion that OB is parallel with OP but O is the common point therefore the points O P and B lie on a straight line. Okay, part two. Vector C B equals K A. Find the value of M and the value of K. Three marks. Right, we start from vector O B equals O C vector O C plus vector C B. Okay, so vector OB will be 4 times 1 minus M, C plus 4M, A equals OC is C, 
vector C B will be K A. Then we compare vector C here with the left hand side and right hand side. So 4 times 1 minus m equals to 1. So this right hand side is 1. Then we solve this equation. We get m is 3 over 4. So similarly, compare with the vector A here. So 4m equals to k. And we know the, k, the m value will be 3 over 4. So k will be 4 times 3 over 4. And the answer is 3. Next part 3. Write down the ratio CP to CA. So for CP, vector CP equals M bracket A minus C. Okay, so now the vector C here, right, minus C actually is vector of CO. And vector A here will be the vector OA. So it will become vector CO plus OA, vector OA. Then the M value will be 3 over 4. Okay, we write here. Then vector CO plus vector OA, we can write it as vector CA. So vector CP equals 3 over 4 vector CA. Hence, CP over CA equals to 3 over 4. We can write it in the ratio form, which is CP to CA equals 3 to 4. And that's the answer. Alright, that's the end of the paper and that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.